So over the last couple of weeks, I have uh, been working as a substitute teacher in one of the local high schools. And it is COVID-19 and there's not really too many kids in class. And I was there with a student teacher. So the student teacher was actually handling all of the basic duties. All I was doing was, uh, well, I'd take attendance and uh, you have to have a licensed teacher in the room with uh, an unlicensed student. So. I had to go in to be the license in the room, but I didn't really do that much for hours at a day for two weeks in a row. So I, of course, spent plenty of time reading over at the Samba just because, hey, sometimes I enjoy doing that. It's kind of fun. See what people are doing. Maybe you can learn something. But I came across this particular uh, topic here, how to choose a camshaft. And just kind of cruising down through here and we get to a couple of pictures right there. And I just thought, oh, hey, that's a pretty neat idea. Why don't I investigate what it is like to polish your pistons and combustion chambers? Is it or is it not worthwhile to do? I mean, it's something that I've never done, but I've never really looked into it to see whether or not it's uh, either worthwhile for sure or detrimental for sure. So let's take a look. I've only found two people who've posted photos of having done this, and I thought it was really kind of neat. Okay, this one is good. You can see that this is really nicely polished. And you can see the guy taking the picture. He's right there. His piston, he's actually dished his piston a little tiny bit. Let's go back to his combustion chamber. Yeah, he's, uh, he's milled his combustion chamber down, so he's reduced the size of the combustion chamber while simultaneously putting a little bit of volume into the piston. It's kind of a neat idea. I saw these absolutely gloriously polished chambers right here, and I got to thinking, now that's really cool. That's really cool. I, 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 I completely and totally appreciate the effort that somebody did. That is just absolutely glorious. It looks to me like that's actually a ceiling fan right there. But I began to think real quick, uh, what does that actually do? Piston top surface finish. Okay, this was posted in uh, November of 2013, meaning it's about uh, a little over seven years old. Thinking has always been a polished surface will reflect heat back where you need it in the chamber. A dull surface would seem to absorb heat. The aluminum foil theory may be in play here. It's hard to prove. And this guy says, I'm in the reflected back camp if your tune-up is in good working order or whatever. So he's a reflection guy. Okay, here's a guy who says he polishes to 2000 grit, which is pretty darn smooth. Prevents carbon buildup and hot spots. Here's a very good observation. You do not need smooth or polished surface at all. I glass bead all my serious race engine piston top. I'll show you a couple of pictures why I think that's kind of a neat idea. Here's a guy. This guy builds a few motors. Engines with a thin layer of deposits are more efficient than those without. I like this kind of a different topic, but ceramic coating is intended to be a heat barrier that reflects heat back into the chamber. Nah, 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 nah. Heat? No, no, no. They're not, they're not mirror polished. They're just like a paint. They don't reflect. Let's see. The carbon buildup will act like a blanket over the top of the piston and will reflect heat. Right? You don't make your mirrors out of carbon. Here's a guy who wants to uh, have a rougher finish over polished finish, securing a thin layer of carbon buildup. Here's a guy who claims to have played with mirror polishing, played with it for years and found nothing in it. This guy was doing work in 1969. Okay, 50 years ago plus, may or may not be relevant. So they had some carbon build up, cleaned it up, put it back together, engine was down on power. Okay, this guy continues on in the mid 70s. Laboratory in Texas, additives that remove carbon deposits. It was rather conclusive that clean combustion chambers and pistons were less efficient than those with a base layer of carbon. Polish is just more heat reflective. That would likely be a small power boost. Only as long as it stayed reflective. So here's a guy who found an article that says that the polished piston doesn't transfer heat to the intake charge as much as a non-polished one. Increase in performance. Uh, that's called horsepower. Remember, I'm, you know, my channel is more about mileage and drivability. It's a good observation. Polishing that surface then reduces the total surface, thus allowing more heat be retained in the chamber. This is through a reduction in surface area. It's about time I said, you know, somebody in here should have come up with this, a surface area reducing type thing. However, then they go on and less heat reflected. As a motorcycle guy, what does he say here? 
Never seen a performance gain of any measurable amount. Reflecting heat to the dome is a bad thing. Okay, here's I like this comment this motorcycle guy, guy has said here. You'd rather have a nice thin layer of insulating carbon coating the piston crown and combustion chamber for that 1% power difference. But polish looks bitchin'. Nice observation. Okay, here's another pile of motorcycle guys. Polish them. It holds heat, removes sharp edges. Let's see, if you decide to go all out and polish the entire chamber, you'll increase the chance of pre-ignition. There's a reason why everything is left rough from the casting process. I've read very little that says that it causes pre-ignition. Okay, I'm going to have to investigate this comment just a little tiny bit. If you ever get a chance to ins uh, see inside an F1 engine, you will find out that you could use their internals as a shaving mirror. I think they know what they are doing. Oh, okay. You see, the thing is, when you make a comment like that on the internet, uh, it's so easy for me to just go over and Google a bunch of pictures for Formula One pistons. And uh, like the guy said, they'll be super shiny. They are, in fact, not super shiny. Uh, see this one right here? You can actually see that there's actually some texture inside the surface of the piston. So, uh, and again, it is post-race. All this stuff is carbon buildup. Total waste of time. Three minutes after the first start, they will have a coating of carbon. Here's the good comment. Firstly, by polishing the surface of the piston to a mirror finish, you will reduce the surface area by remove all the tiny dimples left in the surface after casting. You improve thermal efficiency by reducing surface area. Slightly. I'm glad the guy said ever so slightly. Less carbon buildup. I think that seems to be pretty, uh, pretty well covered. Okay, but here's where it goes bad. The polished surface will reflect a small amount of the heat back into the combustion chamber, again improving thermal efficiency and lower piston temps. But I do like how he finishes it though. Even with these three effects uh, combined, it would be completely unnoticeable in a DD, I means daily driver. Okay, here's a guy who's got something to say that seems important. He finishes by, you'd be better off investing your efforts into shot peening. There's that shot painting thing again, I'm telling you, shot painting is pretty cool. So this is an optical photograph of some highly polished brass. And uh, it shows low spots, like here's a low spot. It shows lots of little high spots. There's another low spot right down here. And then it's got this mountain up right here. So you remember that uh, I read that some of the guys like to bead blast to shot peen their heads. So you can see why they like to do it. As you blast this thing with these beads, little high spots like this are going to get pounded back down into the substrate. And you end up with kind of a wavy floor, but you don't have any of these really high spots. So you don't, uh, it reduces the opportunity to knock. I thought these were pretty cool too. This is a scanning electron microscope. That other photo was optical. This is scanning electron. So very, very detailed. Obviously on the left is a non-polished, and on the right is going to be a polished. As usual, there's a spreadsheet. What we're going to try and do is follow the photons. Because a lot of people say, well, I'm just going to reflect the heat right back into the combustion chamber. Well, that doesn't necessarily do any good. What you've got to do is reflect it back into the combustion product. In other words, the gases that are of, you know, the byproduct of combustion. So I've got those gases listed over here. Nitrogen and oxygen and trace elements. That would be things like uh, carbon dioxide and water molecules. Uh, you put in a little bit of gasoline, you burn it. The oxygen disappears, you end up with some carbon dioxide and some water. So this column right here tells you what you end up with. Uh, you actually increase the number of molecules. You take that back to 100%. So nitrogen which is basically invisible as far as the emissivity goes, went from 78 to 72 and a half. Now, the interesting thing about carbon dioxide and water is that uh, at the 800 plus degrees inside a combustion chamber, the water is a gaseous molecule. Uh, they don't emit, there's no surface. So you don't measure the emissivity of a gas talking about its surface. You have to talk about its emissivity as a function of how much you pass through. And uh, I tell you, all this stuff has been new to me, so I've been, like I said, I had two weeks of sitting there to, to do this stuff, just entertaining myself reading. So it takes a certain volume of air to absorb. 
uh, and they talk about atmospheres. So when you look at this stuff right here, it gets pretty friggin' crazy. So I simply uh, went back to a default emittance, which is right here, of the atmosphere, which is 0.8. But it's 0.8 over an atmosphere. Well, you know, take a guess as to how deep the atmosphere is, right? I figured that uh, you know a nice guess might be. This is, I mean, it's a really poor guess, but hey, why not? Five miles of atmosphere, which turns out to be about eight million millimeters. So anyway, that works out to some of these numbers over here. Uh, we then, of course, take the atmosphere and we stick it in the combustion chamber and we compress it, which increases the density, the number of molecules that we have per unit, which increases the effectiveness. A whole bunch of numbers. Now let's go back over to here on this C particular area. So I've got an engine at 3200. My favorite thing is, of course, highway speed. Uh, at that particular speed, you've got uh, the number of seconds that it takes to do a degree of rotation, how many total degrees there are in an event. So I'm assuming that we take all of the uh, fuel and air and we burn it by 15 degrees after the top dead center. And that we open up the exhaust valve at 40 five degrees before bottom dead center and that gives you a 120 degrees worth of holding the gas inside the combustion chamber. So we've got to hold it there for 120 degrees. This event at 3200 is 0.00625 seconds. Now the thing about reflectivity is that reflectivity involves photons. We know photons go 186,000 miles in a second. Now it's inside an atmosphere and atmospheres don't travel that fast so we have to do an adjustment factor to slow them down a little bit. We've slowed them down, we want to work in kilometers, meters, and then millimeters ultimately. So this is kilometers per second, this is millimeters per second. Look at the size of that, that's 299 billion millimeters per second. That's how fast light travels. So the event, which is the 120 degrees or this many seconds, the uh, light inside that combustion chamber is going to travel 1.8 billion millimeters. My combustion chamber, let's say, is an 85 and a half. It's just a stalker. So how many times can it go back and forth through the combustion chamber over an 85 and a half millimeter uh, piston? Anyway, that gives you 21.8 million times that it can go back and forth. So you've got to hold your photons in that combustion chamber for 21.8 million trips. Uh, the emittance of the surface, okay, let's say it's really a highly polished aluminum. Uh, reflectance is one minus the emittance. So uh, highly reflective aluminum does not emit very much, but it's very reflective. So we get 0.196, sorry, 0.96. Anyway, so if we, let's assume we start with 100,000 photons and we make our first pass over to the aluminum where it is reflected. 96% of it gets reflected. We pass it through the uh, combustion byproducts, which have this particular emittance per event. That gives you this many. So we went down this much, we absorbed a few. We go down, we absorb, we go down, we absorb. Anyway, this column here represents how much we have put into the aluminum. And this tells you how much you've put back into the combustion byproducts. So we sit there and we look at these numbers after taking all 100,000 of them all the way through the 21.8 million events. Uh, and this is where you end up here, which if you look at this is 0 0.000, let's call it 9, one-tenth of 1%, one less than one-tenth of 1%. One so that's the effect that you're trying to capture by doing a highly polished combustion chamber is less than one-tenth of one percent based on the physics of emittance and the behavior of the exhaust gases inside the combustion chamber which yeah sadly means it's completely worthless so here we are for the big conclusion and uh, I've got a selection of uh, topics that are related to this for instance uh, let's start with the reflected heat uh, clearly the spreadsheet shows that you cannot reflect the heat back into the combustion chamber. That's uh, an impossibility. Uh, we've got the issue of surface area. Does it reduce surface area? We, we saw the photos. I mean, it, it's clear that at that level, you can polish out an awful lot of ridges and mountains and whatnot and get the thing a heck of a lot smoother. But the point is, I've not been able to find anything anywhere that says if you take it 
from let's say 120 grit sandpaper to 1200 grit sandpaper you've reduced your surface area by 0.02 percent the only reason I would do something like this is if you could tell me that there is a measurable difference have I dropped my surface area by 1 percent 5 percent 0.1 percent you got to be able to tell me what it is and I can't find anything and that leaves the Volkswagen crowd out the V8 crowd out I looked at mopeds I looked at um, geez the rice burner crowd Supras Hondas Toyotas you name it and nobody nobody has a freaking clue uh, on what happens to the surface area when you polish down to that level uh, the best I could do like I said was to go to those photos and the photos clearly show little mountains that stick up and uh, versus the massive valleys the electron microscope uh, ones were really cool I really liked looking at some of those anyway let's move on carbon buildup yeah sure it's easier to get the carbon off yeah but uh, you know we're talking daily drivers here that's what my channel is about it's about daily driving about pulling your motor apart after 20 years not after 20 hours everybody says it's easier to clean it up great wow we have something that works anti-knock um, I went over to the V8 guys because um, you know th there are probably 10 V8 guys for every VW guy so there's a heck of a lot more data over there and as far as relevance goes well you know they're two valve per cylinder and they're push rod motors so they do have some similarities to what we do so I find going over to the V8 crowd to be uh, it's a relevant activity uh, and what I found was that uh, you know if you take five engine builders over there four of the engine builders do not polish and then you find the the, the, the other guy who does polish you know you know the guy's pumping his business but that's the VA guys let's read the words from one Volkswagen guy who is uh, I've quoted this guy before he's a knowledgeable guy okay this is the Modoc I've quoted this guy before he says in my experience and that of many others a polished chamber knocks easier than a rough one you can make up your own reason why all right that's a Volkswagen guy it's a Volkswagen guy who's got a lot of experience building these things and um, yeah I kind of trust what the guy says there now as far as the reasons why I think it comes down to atomization of the fuel see the thing about a highly polished combustion chamber is it uh, it doesn't emit that's what I mean that's what people are trying to do they're trying to prevent it from emitting which means it reflects so it's going to try and take the combustion chamber heat and reflect the photonic portion of the heat back into the chamber doesn't work the downside is is that when you're trying to atomize your fuel and this is really important you do not atomize fuel through uh, a vacuum you know when you pull it through your carburetor you generate a vacuum and it's like oh well, I pull it through the carburetor the vacuum vaporizes the fuel no the vaporizer it does not vaporize the fuel it pulls hotter molecules out of the liquid the hotter molecules vaporize what you're left with are nodules of much colder fuel that become even harder to vaporize and in order to vaporize and get your motor to run properly you got to get that vaporized very very quickly uh, the best way to do that of course is going to be to put heat into it now you put heat into the system by applying compression you push the piston up and at some point you compress the fluid you know the air fluid your combustion chamber fluids you've compressed it so much that it heats up enough to vaporize the fuel the problem is that's so late in the process that the fuel doesn't have a chance to uh, really flow through and become a, a homogeneous mixture but if you've got a chamber that is emitting heat into the gasoline as the uh, of course as your combustion mixture pulls into the chamber and you're heating it up and vaporizing that fuel early then it has a chance to mix and become more homogeneous one of the things about homogeneous mixtures is they're more resistive to knock which supports Modoc's theory uh, the other thing that I came across was that an awful lot of people will be blast uh, the bee blasting was over on the v8 side uh, there may be a few people on the Volkswagen side the bee blast I didn't find anybody who I think did that or if I did it was just overwhelmed by all the v8 guys that I uh, found doing it but the bee blasting makes sense uh, once you've cleaned up your combustion chambers and you polish them down a little bit and you get those microscopic little mountains that stick up like we saw in the photos and then you just bead blast them right back down into the substrate and so yeah what did I do with my own motor I don't know probably about 120 grit on the chambers and pistons it's just something I just smoothed it out I'm not I wasn't that concerned with what I was doing it's um, you know just get rid of the high spots so that you don't knock and uh, 
I've always had it in the back of my mind that I do want the combustion chamber to emit some radiant energy into my fuel so that it vaporizes early. And you're not going to get that if you've got a really hot, a polished combustion chamber or a combustion chamber that doesn't have some carbon buildup. The neat thing about carbon is, is that uh, it has pretty high emittance. So the carbon will spew photons into your fuel. And your fuel, which is a liquid and not a gas, so the liquid does have a surface and it will absorb radiant energy. But anyway, that's what I spent the last couple of weeks doing was reading stuff about that. Can you imagine that? Yeah, two weeks of hours and hours and hours of sitting in a, in a classroom uh, with a, you know, maybe at most, uh, I think I may have been like five students in there at any one point in time, everybody wearing masks. Wow, if it wasn't for the sample, you know, I would have been bored out of my gourd. But hey, anyway, that's enough of that one.